Welcome to video 6 of series 3, and when you write code, it's really common that you'll always find a case where you need to delay a bit of code for some reason. Uh, I'll show two ways to do that. One is to write a coroutine, and the other is to use the invoke. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hide this um, canvas here. So after say a couple of seconds, what I want to happen is to deactivate this canvas, to actually deactivate the game object. So when you deactivate a game object, it's it's there in memory, but it's disabled. And of course you can't see it, and none of the scripts on it will be uh, doing anything as well. None of the components will be doing anything as well when you disable a game object. So that's what I'm going to do through code, and I'm just going to apply a small delay as well. Uh, so I'll go back to the welcome script, and oh, by the way, that script, that the other one that I wrote in the beginning to just show about the namespace stuff, I'll just go ahead and delete that. So I'll get rid of that. Okay, go back and open up the one that I've been working on, and uh, then I'll add in some new code. So what I'm going to do is that uh, after uh, I've had this welcome message, uh, after it's been set, uh, in this function, I'm going to run another method and uh, just disable the game object, dis dis uh, disable that canvas itself. So first of all, I'm just going to make a new uh, variable here. I'll just call it public game object. So I'm going to disable a game object, public game object, uh, canvas uh, welcome. All right. And this is going to get set in the inspector over here. So canvas welcome, and I'll, I can rename that. I don't have to, but I do actually. When I have more than one canvas in the scene, I do rename them, so I don't have to. All right, so I'll just slot that in so I don't forget to do it later. And that's the game object itself, all of this inside of it as well. Uh, okay, so now that I've got a, uh, I can set, I've set a reference to it. Um, well, I need to disable it. Uh, so I'll make a new method for doing that. I'll call it uh, disable canvas. Okay. And what I will then say is that uh, canvas welcome dot set active. And you set the value, it's telling us what to do. Activates, deactivates the game object and the value, activate or deactivation of that object. And it requires a type of bool. It's a boolean, and a boolean is true or false. Uh, so I'm going to say set active false. And this will disable the game object. So this is how you disable game objects. And if you were enabling, you would just put uh, true, okay? If I can type right true. So that's what you would do if you were enabling it. Okay, so I'm disabling, so I'll do that. Now I need to call it. Uh, so I could call it here, for example. I can call it after I've done this sort of stuff. I've set that uh, text message. It's a good place to call it. So disable canvas. Now there's a problem with this, uh, which you'll see. So if I run it, Bang, it's gone. All right, so it gets disabled immediately. Of course it will, because I'm running that piece, that instruction immediately. So I'll start with the simpler one, uh, invoking. I don't use this too often, invoke. So you could invoke uh, the function. So it's the capital I, invoke. And it needs the name of the method. So you actually have to type in the name It's a, with a string. So you have to put in the quotation marks. What I just did is I copied the name so I wouldn't get it wrong. And the next parameter it requires, the next argument, it needs a float time. A float is a, basically a number with lots of decimal places. So you can have lots and lots of decimals. So this is a float. And uh, something to note when you write float. So, okay, say so for example, I want it to disappear after four and a half seconds. So 4.5, oops, 4.5. You must put F floats, you must always write F at the end. If you don't, you'll have an error. Okay, and then I can do it this way. Okay, so now I'll invoke this function after four and a half seconds. So I'll run that. It'll show. And then 
after a certain amount of time, there you go, it's gone. So it gets deactivated. And um, what I'll do next then is to uh, prepare now a coroutine instead. So this is a, a disadvantage of invoke. I can't actually pass in anything. So I can't pass in a, uh, a value into invoke. Say, for example, if it took a float, uh, some number, I'm just making some up, something up. If it took something in and then you use that to process that number and then do something with it, you can't do that with invoke. Uh, so then it's no use. So I don't need that anymore. I'll get rid of that. So I don't use invoke too much, but just so that if you, if you have a function, you're not passing anything in, then it's fine. You can just do that. How about I turn this into a coroutine? So I say I enumerator. Oops, spelling correctly. I enumerator. So look for this one. Okay. And just hit tab. Okay. So now I can do something a bit different. All right. So. I need to, one of the things with a, a coroutine, you must have a, a return statement of some kind inside of it. You must have a return instruction. Right, so this is something you just have to memorize, that this is how it looks. When you want to add a delay, you say yield return new wait for seconds and you put in the number of seconds, so say three and a half seconds. This is something that you'll just learn and memorize because you'll do it lots and lots and lots, and you'll just memorize it eventually. Now that's the coroutine set up. What's going to happen is when this is called, it will wait for three and a half seconds and then carry out this instruction right here. To call a coroutine, you say start coroutine okay and then the bracket and then say disable canvas now it is a method so you must put in its own brackets too and then the closing one semicolon and now it will call all right so if I go back to unity and press play after three and a half seconds, the canvas will be disabled. And you see there, it's been unchecked now. That's it. So it's the same thing. I can enable it while playing in this in Unity. But that's what I, all I'm doing. I'm just pressing the check mark by code. All right. Uh, so that's done. Now, I, I do want to talk about something about uh, passing in parameters. So all methods, uh, you can put something in them. So you can, you can pass in stuff. So for example, a float. And I can call this variable, anything I want, float, wait, time. And now there's an error because it needs something. You can see that my uh, coroutine, my method here, requires a float as an input into it. And I want to make use of it here too. Obviously, logically, I don't need to put in 3.5 there anymore. I can put in here wait time. OK. And now I can just type 3.5 here, don't forget the F, and then run it. Now another way is I could just make a variable called private float wait time is equal to 3.5 seconds and then I didn't need to do this, I don't need any inputs and I can just call it here as well and that's just another way of doing it. Uh, many times you, you do need to pass in stuff into our methods to do carry out some specific actions and you'll see plenty of examples of that in series three okay so this is it so now i'll start a coroutine so after i've uh, played the welcome message so my welcome message after it uh, sets the message it is then going to start this coroutine to disable the canvas and it will carry out this instruction after three and a half seconds so i'll just play that and you'll see that after three and a half seconds, it's gone. Okay, so that's it. Uh, so in this video, you saw how to delay code. It's an important thing that you need to know, and you will do many times. Uh, and you saw how to invoke a function as well. Uh, and that is also simple too, but you just have to remember with invoke, uh, you can't pass in parameters, so then it's not so useful for that. Then you really do need a coroutine 
where you can pass in something and have it get processed. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and move on to the next video uh, where there'll be a, a lot more interesting stuff I'll be talking about. All right, thanks for watching.